In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. Greetings, good people of God. You are listening to Catholic Meditation. I am Father Blessed Ambang Njume. Today is Friday, the 25th of October, 2024. It is Friday of the 29th week in Ordinary Time Church Year B. Good morning and thanks for joining us. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is taken from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians, chapter 4, verses 1 to 6. The responsorial psalm is taken from Psalm 24. The response to the psalm is, These are the people who seek your face, O Lord. The Gospel is taken from St. Luke, chapter 12, verses 54 to 59. A meditation is drawn from the first reading. Brethren, I, a prisoner for the Lord, beg you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all lowliness and meekness, with patience, forbearing one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace, there is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us all, who is above all and through all and in all. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The theme for today's meditation is one Lord, one faith, one baptism. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Dear good people of God, in today's first reading, St. Paul addresses the issue of division in the church at Ephesus, calling them to unity. There is one body and one spirit. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 4 to 6. The church is and must be united because it is founded by Christ and we form one family and we are all sons and daughters of the same Heavenly Father. A human body has only one heart. All of us form that body, the church. And we all, that is, that body, must have one heart. The church is the body of Christ, and Christ is one. He is not divided. Therefore, there is one body. We are all different parts of it. There is one spirit, the Holy Spirit. The spirit too is one and not divided. The Spirit works in the church and keeps the church alive. Or do you have a different Holy Spirit from others? Some behave as though they have a higher level of the Holy Spirit, as if the Holy Spirit is in different grades and degrees. There is one faith, the faith we all profess, faith in God, unless you believe in something or someone else. 
But God is one, and the faith we profess is faith in him. There is one baptism. We are all baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. This is the Trinitarian formula of baptism given to us by Jesus himself when he said, Go out and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. There is one body, one Spirit, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God who is Father of us all. This is our calling, to be united because Jesus is God and God is a unity of persons. Why then the division? Why then does one leave from one church after being baptized to another and they are asked to be rebaptized, considering they were never baptized at all? Yet St. Paul says there is one baptism and we hear some people saying baptism is baptism. Why does St. Paul say there is one faith, yet church doctrine seems to differ? Others believe in the Blessed Virgin Mary. Others do not. Others believe in the real presence of Jesus, body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Eucharist. And others do not. Does this not appear to be difference in faith? What is the content of faith that makes faith one? Now, beloved, baptism is supposed to be one, that is, having the same meaning, formula, and effect everywhere, which is the washing us away from original sin, making us members of the church and children of God. This baptism is baptism of water and the Holy Spirit. Unfortunately, when some people leave from certain churches, especially Pentecostal churches, they have to be rebaptized because the right formula of baptism was never used when they were baptized, and that is never considered as baptism in the first place. The Catholic Church recognizes the baptism from the Presbyterian Church, from the Baptist Church. Some say the baptism of the Church, especially the Catholic Church, is not baptism, because the faithful are not immersed in water. Water is poured on their heads, and they ask, was that how Jesus was baptized? The Catholic Church teaches that baptism can be done either by immersion or by sprinkling. Both methods are allowed. Where did Jesus say it must be by immersion? And since they claim it is what Jesus did and how he was baptized, why don't they go to the river Jordan to do as he did? Dear God's good people, we must guard against biblical fundamentalism and religious fanatism. Let us not hang on accidents and throw away the essence. There is one faith because faith is in God. It is our belief in God that takes us to heaven. When St. Paul says there is one faith, he means the content, the deposit of faith. Of course, yes, Jesus handed this deposit of faith to Peter and the apostles and from them down to us. It is one. That is the truth, the whole ensemble of the faith. But with the rise of many different churches, people pick and choose out of that content, the whole ensemble. They pick and choose what they want to keep, what they are comfortable with. What they are not comfortable with, they discard. And this makes them keep half-truths. Even within the same church, there are some people who pick and choose. Even among Catholics, there are some who pick and choose certain contents of the faith. And when some are not comfortable with a certain matter of faith or truth, they break away to form their own branch of the church. So indeed, the faith is one. But because we pick and choose, emphasizing on what pleases us, it seems as though the content is different. Yes, indeed, there is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God who is Father of us all. If we all adhered to the same truth and remained very fervent to the deposit of faith, we would discover that the faith is one. Let us pray for that grace, that we may remain true to the deposit of faith given to us 
and that we may not pick and choose what suits us and what we are comfortable with. And when we take all that Christ has given to us, handed down to the apostles and down to us, either written or by sacred tradition, we shall remain true to the one faith that has been handed over to us. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen.